My name is Naveen. Uh, today we are going to talk about AMQ streams or Kafka on top of OpenShift. But first, let's understand the problem statement to begin with. Oftentimes you're challenged with installing software for experimentation. And one such messaging software is Kafka. Now, if you're installing a single node uh, cluster, that's perfectly okay. But um, experimentation also requires you to test out a few advanced features like high availability fault tolerant. So when you're installing Kafka using this high availability and fault tolerance, you can think about how difficult the installation can become. It's also important to note that teams often don't need to spend time on how to install, but rather, what do you do after installation? So oftentimes, cloud-like self-servicing capabilities are very, very essential for any team's success. So today, we're gonna to walk through those two and how OpenShift makes it extremely easy to do all of this in just a few steps. But first, let's talk about a setup. We have a single OpenShift cluster, in this particular OpenShift cluster, we have two projects, uh, which are dedicated to two different teams. We're just gonna call those projects as team one space, which has a user one. You also have team two space, which has a user two. Let's go ahead and see how the cluster is presented. It's a simple cluster, uh, which is hosted on top of AWS, as you can see. I have Open TLC Manager, this is the Administration Manager, or say Administration User. I also have in the same cluster, User1, that is part of the Team1 space. As you can see, User1 does not have access to any other projects, and this is by design, there is RBAC built into the OpenShift cluster. You also have User2, which is dedicated to Team02 space. Now what you are seeing over here is a developer console, meaning what as an application developer I would see when I log in. So if I want to add any capabilities to this particular console, I need to click on add and I get a lot of different options. But one such operation is your operator backed addition. Let's go ahead and click and see what happens. At this point of time, there's nothing found. Well, this is operator backed. We will talk about operators in just a minute. The same is the case when we look into the team one for the user one. There is absolutely nothing on this particular project that teams can leverage. Now let's say the teams requested the administrator to provide capabilities. As an admin, now I need something that can be made available very easily. So OpenShift makes bringing software that is not native to Kubernetes and make it behave as if it is native to Kubernetes using a concept called operators. Now think about bringing software. It's not just about, you know, take a software, install it, but you also go through things like upgrades. You have patches. There's a whole life cycle associated with it. So whenever you're thinking about software, you also have to think about this entire life cycle. One of the options, as you can see on the administrator console, is this operators. Within that, you have operator hub. This is a single pane of glass for all such softwares that can be made available within the context of OpenShift. As you can see, there are 403 available. That's a lot. And that's where the value proposition of OpenShift starts coming in. Out of this, you can also see there are some which are Red Hat provided. There are also some certified which are provided by others but are certified on top of OpenShift, which means about 197 items are available at your disposal for you to go ahead and start experimenting with full support. So let's go ahead and see how you install Kafka on top of this particular cluster. All we need to do is go ahead and search for the word streams you are given an option called Red Hat AMQ Streams. When you click on this, you're given an option to install. Let's go ahead and click on the install. If you want to read through the description, you feel free to read so. Uh, but at the same time, you can see each operator comes with a certain capabilities. And this AMQ Streams has got a lot of capabilities by itself. It's not just talking about installation. You're talking about upgrades, full lifecycle, and also deep insights. 
Let's see how the installation procedure would look like. You click on install, you're given a form. And all you need to do is just click on certain options that are available to you and click on the install and that should be it. But let me walk you through what's available on the right side. When we talk about Kafka, it's not just the Kafka cluster. There are ad additional components that are part of Kafka ecosystem. They are provided as a part of the same operator in terms of APIs. But for today's discussion, we're just going to talk about how you would install a Kafka cluster that you can give to your developers. But first, let's click on this install and see what happens. At this point of time, what's happening behind the scenes is the OpenShift cluster is getting enabled to start leveraging Kafka also available as a part of this cluster. Meaning, if you're in a VM world, think of it as an infrastructure person that is getting Kafka as a software, downloading a package from a site and getting all the information ready, operational knowledge ready, so that they are ready to go ahead and install for any of the development teams that request a Kafka installation. There's a lot of details which are happening behind the scenes, but the status of all of this, you can see in just clicking this installed operators, you would see AMQ streams available in all namespaces, the namespaces and projects, they always are synonymous. Then you got, uh, it succeeded in all of that. Now let's go ahead and see what it actually means to an end user. So as an admin, we provision Kafka. So as an end user, if we go ahead and click on add, previously when we clicked operator backed, we did not get any. But right now we can see a lot of capabilities are given to me as an end user so that I can install whatever I need from a Kafka standpoint. That is the power of using operators and how simplified the operators can make the life of a developer and an application architect easy to experiment. Now let's go ahead and simplify this even further by seeing how easy it is to install a Kafka cluster. All we need to do is click on Kafka. You can create it. This gives you a form view. There are two ways in which you can configure a cluster. One, using the form, or the second, using a YAML file. So let's go ahead and see what it means on the form. So as in when I'm putting in the values, the team01 cluster, you can see this has got three brokers, which are highly available brokers. It also has got uh, zookeepers, which are also three in configuration. If you would like to see the YAML view, the YAML gets printed automatically by the UI itself. So you don't have to worry about the syntax of how you would create it. Think of it also an added advantage. You can take this YAML file, put it inside Git, and you have version controlling as a part of it. Once you do this, all you need to do is click on Create. Behind the scenes, what happens is that, speci that specification is now given to the operator and the operator interprets that it has to install a highly available Kafka cluster. Now Kafka is a difficult install when it comes to uh, high availability and fault tolerance with Zookeeper and, and brokers. The first thing as a part of the sequence that you need to take care of is you have to install Zookeeper. All those machines have to form a quorum before you can install the broker components. As an end user, you don't have to worry about it because the operator takes care of all of this for you. It's also important that if there are any errors, the operator will not go through the next step as well. As you can see, zookeepers are all running. Once zookeepers were running, it actually went ahead and did the cluster itself. And this cluster is your broker components. And once the broker components are ready, then it will install the other components. In this example, you can see uh, there is a cluster entity operator. Now this operator is part of the same configuration that we give. Installing Kafka cluster is one thing, but you have to create topics. You have to be able to have user management on those particular topics. 
those are done by this particular cluster entity operator. So as you can see, a complex installation which requires so much coordination between different components like Zookeeper, broker instances, and anything around it is made simplified using a simple form-based approach so that you can start experimenting. There you go. You got a cluster that is absolutely ready. If you go to a user two space, you can also see that the same capabilities are available at your disposal. When you click on topology, you don't see anything purely because the previous operator was uh, uh, the cu the previous cluster was created on the team zero one space. If you want, you can spin the same cluster for this particular team, and you should be ready to go. So let's go ahead and spin that and see how this comes up. This has got team 02 cluster, and we're gonna use the same defaults, three brokers, and I've got three zookeepers. So that way, I just go ahead and click on create. It does all the different operations that we had for the team 01, just similar to that. So it just takes few seconds to kind of go through the entire procedure to be able to install Kafka. All of this is made possible using the concept of operators. So this is gonna take a little time, but it follows the same procedure as what was done for the team 01 as well. So let's go ahead and summarize what we have done so far. The first thing we talked about is installing Kafka is extremely easy on top of OpenShift. And the way it does is using the operators. You also have cloud-like capabilities like self-servicing, which you could see as an admin, I can create the software so that it can be available to any of the developer or the application teams. So you control what you need, but at the same time, you gain more agility using the concept of operators on top of OpenShift. Well, that's it for now. We'll talk again later as we go through this particular process.